Hi, Ron here again uh, with the radiologictechnologist.com. Another real common question people ask is, can I work full time and go to a radiography program? Not a lot of people have the money just sitting around to pay for the school, so they know they're going to have to work while they go to school, and that's a big concern is how do you juggle both? Our radiography programs tend to be a good 40 hour a week when you mix in the didactic classes with the clinic rotation. So how exactly are you going to work full time while you go to school full time? First of all, the schools will advise against it. If you tell them that you intend on working full time in your interview process, it's not going to, not going to look good. They're not going to like, they want somebody that's figured out how to be dedicated to what they're doing. They don't want to hear that you're going to have a hard time keeping up because you've got to work full time to support whatever issues you have to support. So let's kind of lay out how this might look. So first of all, of course, you got to apply to your school of choice. Uh, there's no point in worrying about anything. If you can work, you go to school at the same time unless you get accepted. So um, there's a lot of competition out there for these programs. So the first step is just get accepted. Um, number two, figure out how you're going to pay for the program once you're accepted. Um, you know, I've met a lot of people that just said, I, I, don't, I, I have too many responsibilities. I have to work. I can't go to school. Hey, look, I had a bunch of kids and worked and went to x-ray school. And then right at the end of that, I jumped into ultrasound school and I got a bachelor's and I got a master's. So don't fall for the excuse of I have kids or I have obligations. I can't go to school. I'm going to tell you how to do it. So the third step, uh, you know, maybe you need to look for cha a change of job. If your current job won't work with you to work around the hours, maybe you need to look at changing jobs. I know that's tough sometimes. But if you're going to accomplish this goal, be serious about this goal of going back to school, you've got to figure out how to make this work. I was working at a hospital in the laboratory and was able to do classes while I was in the laboratory, but I wouldn't have been able to do clinical rotation. My lab job was about, you know, like a Monday through Friday type job, and school is about Monday through Friday type job. So um, what I did was switch to a weekend job, and I grabbed two 16-hour shifts. So I still got 32 hours on the weekends, which is full-time pay, but that opened me up during the week. So you've got to figure out a way. Are you going to work nights and go to school during the day? Are you going to, uh, you know, sometimes your clinicals, they'll let you come in super early. Maybe you could do, a, like, the 4 a.m. rounds where you're going around doing portables with techs in the morning, maybe you do four to four to noon or something like that, and then go to work at one and work one to eight and then go home and sleep and, and get back up. But you know, there's a lot of flexibility there. So you've got to start figuring that out. So that leads me to the next step, which is step four. That's you got to buy a day timer or a planner and, and you can do it on your phone. That's fine. But for me, I had to have a day timer that I could carry in my hand. I could see it. I can flip it open. If I put stuff on this and it breaks, dies, it's left somewhere, glitches, whatever, I've lost the plan. Buy a day timer and start making notes in it. Um, map out what your first year will look like. Use color coding to identify where you'll work, a color for school, a color for eat, color for sleep, color for family time study. I'm not kidding, you gotta map all that out. If you're working full time, you're going to school full time, you have got to account for every little thing that you're gonna do. And it has to do with work-life balance too. You've got to make sure that you not only have your school time figured out, but your family time or your personal time or your church time or, or whatever it is that's important to you in your life. So um, don't fail to plan or you will certainly plan to fail. Number five, be willing to sleep and shower at the hospital. It's just a given, depending on what your work shift is like. Um, I slept in my car dozens of times in between shifts. Um, if you are only going to get three hours of sleep, is it worth driving all the way home? You know, it's home a half hour to an hour away, and then you have to drive back. That's two hours of sleep you just lost because you wanted to drive home. Figure out there's oftentimes sleeping rooms. There's always shower rooms. Physicians often have call rooms where they can stay the night. I've been in plenty of hospitals where technologists have sleep rooms for the weekend techs. Um, figure that out, and... Uh, don't be shy to take advantage of this to reduce your time. Remember, this is only temporary. It's two years to get you through school, and then everything will, will be so much better when you're done. It's Shawshank Redemption, right? you got to crawl through all that gunk and come out clean on the other side. So here's what I did twice, and it worked. I did it for x-ray school, and I did it for ultrasound school. I actually have a video about it as well, but um, I think it's the five reasons why I chose radiography. But I'll summarize for the purpose of this video. So I was working a regular job in the lab at the old Desert Samaritan Hospital back in Mesa, Arizona. Uh, phlebotomy was a great starter job, but I wanted to advance and I, I didn't want to be a, a med tech. Um, so phlebotomy was a great starter job, but I wanted to advance. 
And after you sat down radiography, I followed the same plan as what I just listed, those five steps. Um, I transferred to a job in the ICU where I worked 16 hour shifts on Saturday and Sunday that paid my bills. It was a job in the ICU as a health unit coordinator or a HUC. And I got accepted to the local x-ray program. And then over the course of the next 12 months, I just worked on the weekends and went to classes during the week. So when I still had the evenings for my family, five nights a week. And during the second 12 month rotation, the classes were reduced to uh, one day a week and it was mostly clinical hours. So I switched my hours to work um, weekday hours and took weekend shifts for clinicals. So on my, in my program, I got to do Friday, Saturday, Sunday clinical rotations, which meant I can work Monday through Thursday. So again, you've got to see, and you can ask all these questions before you even apply to the program. You can call and talk to a counselor and say, am I allowed to do clinical rotations on the weekend? Am I allowed to do clinical rotations overnight? Which is usually no, but I've seen a lot of programs that allow you to do clinical rotations till midnight or one in the morning. So that leaves open the option of starting around two or three in the afternoon and working to one in the morning. So you could conceivably have a job from seven to three or seven to four and then come in and do something that might clinicals into the night. You know, one of the other benefits of taking that weekend clinical rotation, and I often share the story because it propelled me, it launched me through my technologist career, but on that weekend shift when there wasn't many people around, the, the clinical instructor teaching me x-ray was the CT x-ray tech. So when we weren't doing x-rays, he was teaching me CT. So by the time I graduated my x-ray program, I knew CT and was doing CT. So I got hired I got hired in one location as an x-ray tech. I got hired at that location where I was cross-training CT as a CT tech. And I worked the night shift doing x-ray and CT. So it, it benefits to look for those off-hour clinicals because you might get additional training that you don't get during the day when all of management's walking around, all worried about you know, whose eyes are on what information. And uh, so there you go. There's a way to figure it out. I promise I have six kids. I put myself through an x-ray program, an ultrasound program, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and I'm now about to start a doctorate. All while raising a family of eight and paying the bills and getting things done. So if I can do it, you can do it too. If you have any questions, uh, send them to me. I'll be happy to, to answer them. Don't forget to visit the website. I appreciate it. Have a great day.